in the Metro Division. It's not a two-horse race anymore. We've got that and more on this special 2024 Locked On NHL season preview. This is the Locked On Podcast Network's 2024 NHL season preview. Your team, every day. Welcome, everybody, to the 2024 Locked On NHL season preview. In this episode, we will be breaking down the best of the Metro Division, including, of course, we have with me today, John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers, Zach Martin of Locked On Hurricanes, Dan Holmey of Locked On Capitals. I am Gil Martin of Locked On Islanders. We'll discuss who wins, how many points each team will get, if any teams will fall into the bottom half of the division, and one thing that could derail the season for everyone. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Check out all the latest odds and hockey futures at FanDuel.com. Gentlemen, it is time for another hockey season. That is the good news, and we have got a lot to discuss here on today's show. Uh, first of all, how how is everybody feeling about the start of this season? John, let's start with you. I mean, the sooner the better. You know, obviously the Rangers made a nice run through the playoffs last year, won a couple of playoff series, and started the, the postseason 7-0 and they were in some dog fights with the Florida Panthers. I, I feel like uh, they kind of just ran into a brick wall. It was the Panthers' year, and uh, unless things really kind of fell the way of the Rangers or any other team that was playing the Panthers, they probably were going to be the last team standing. But I'm excited. You know, the Rangers, uh, they bring back most of their core and a um, couple other, you know, additions here and there as well. It's largely the same team, though, and, uh, man, I'm ready to go, ready for some hockey. And who do you think has the best chance to win the Metro this year? Yeah, I'm biased, obviously, but uh, I see no reason not to pick my Rangers to repeat uh, for pretty pretty much all the reasons I just said right there. Um, it is largely the exact same team that we saw last year. It's a team that not only won the division, but had the best record, the most points in hockey, and uh, made a strong playoff run of the conference final. And like I said, just kind of ran into a buzzsaw at that point. Um, you know, I, I think there's going to be some other great competition. The Metro is such a good division. And, you know, any two teams that you pick out of that division – They've got like their own little uh, type of rivalry going on. Like every matchup has a different feel to it in this division. And um, it's always a battle, but uh, I'm going with my Rangers to, to win it again. Dan, how about you? How, how are you feeling coming into this season? I'm feeling really confident. I mean, if you take a look at what former GM Brian McClellan did uh, during free agency, swinging for the fences, uh, picking up a peer Luke Dubois, Jacob Chikrin, uh, Andrew Mangiapane, Logan Thompson. These are the big moves that ostensibly are going to take this team to the next level. These are the moves that GM Brian McClellan said were risky moves. Now, there is risk associated with them, but I want to view Pierre-Luc Dubois in particular as a blip on the radar. I think he is going to be the spark plug, the catalyst to get Alex Ovechkin off to a great start. Zach, how about you? It's It's been an interesting offseason in Carolina. How optimistic are you, and who do you think is going to win the Metro Division? Uh, definitely optimistic for sure. I know a lot of people are saying this team might have taken the full step back. I would say probably a half step back just because you still have most of the roster coming back. A couple of, di- couple of changes you have to do on the defense for core, you know, a little bit more question marks than usual. But I am very optimistic for the Hurricanes to make a, another dock fight with the Rangers coming uh, for the 24-25 season. While I would love to have a biased opinion, also like, you know, what Dan said, I am a real a realist too. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to say the Rangers, but hey, who knows? Maybe the Carolina Hurricanes might surprise some people and be like, hey, paper might seem one thing, but it's all about what, how you put it on the ice. Yeah, no question about that. And as for me with the New York Islanders, I, I feel like this Islanders team improved a little bit. Is it enough? Probably not to make them true contenders. I would have to think that the Rangers are most likely to win this division. But I think it's going to be a very interesting year for all four of our teams uh, because, you know, they're really, you know, there's a lot of unknowns here. I think the Rangers took a little bit of a step back compared to the way their roster was put together last year at the in the playoff run. I, I think we had uh, a step back, as you mentioned, Zach, from the Hurricanes. The Capitals made some moves. And then, you know, where do the Devils and Penguins fit into all this because the Devils 
Uh, even though Luke Hughes is now going to miss the beginning of the season, they made a lot of moves. They got their goaltending straightened out. Uh, hard to count out the Penguins when, whenever you've got a team with Sidney Crosby, Ganey Malkin, Chris Letang, even the Blue Jackets, I think, will be better than they were a year ago. They're just, you know, there's no easy games in this division. Is there any team that you guys feel could surprise people in the division this year? Well, when I take a look at it, I think it could be the New Jersey Devils, for example. I think that they made some uh, big moves uh, in the offseason, and I think they're ready for bigger and better things. The acquisition of Sheldon Keefe as the new coach and seasoned goalie Jacob Markstrom has really, I would say, fortified this team's defense and goaltending. And then I think also strategic moves during the draft and free agency adding talented players such as Brett Pesci, Brendan Dillon, Thomas Tatar, and promising prospects like Jonathan uh, Kovacek. All right. Well, let's take a look right now at our FanDuel odds and the point projections for the upcoming season. I'm going to ask each of you about your teams. You can see the Rangers and the Hurricanes up at the top with 100.5 points as the over-under followed by the Islanders with 91.5 and the Capitals with 86.5. John, the Rangers are on top of this list, so do you think that they will exceed or fall short of that 100.5 uh, point mark? Uh, I think they'll surpass it. I'm not so sure. You know, it's difficult to, uh, you know, last year, 114 points in the regular season, President's Trophy. It'd be tough to do that two seasons in a row. But when you look at this Ranger roster, and it goes back to what I was talking about earlier, uh, no significant losses really of any kind. They've got a couple of prospects uh, that are coming along nicely as well. So to me, it's just as simple as I don't see this team finishing 14 points worse this upcoming season than they did uh, for the season that just concluded. And that's what would have to happen for the under to hit here. Um, so for me, yeah, I'm going to go with the Rangers uh, over on that. And, um, you know, I said this at the at the start of last season. I'll say it again this year. I think the Rangers actually do have a better roster now, slightly better, not, not enormously better, but slightly better roster now than they had uh, going into the season last year um, when, when it comes to opening night rosters. I think Riley Smith is a nice pickup, and I know we're going to talk about, you know, big – additions for our teams a little bit later in today's episode. So I'll save that for them. But for the time being, yeah, I'll just say the Rangers uh, don't drop by 14 points and, and they hit the over on that. Zach, another 100.5 over under projection for the Canes. Do you think they exceed that mark? I, I do think they will. I mean, like it's a three, they were three points back of the Rangers. Like John said, it would take a lot for the Hurricanes to drop that many points. And I don't see them doing that. Yes, you do lose Tampa Terra Vine, and you do lose Steph Nates, and of course you lose some guys on defense. But overall, I think on paper this roster is still good enough to hit 100 points easily. So, yeah, I'm definitely taking the over of the Carolina Hurricanes passing 100 and a half. All right. And, uh, Dan, the Capitals coming in at 86 and a half points. I would think they would need to surpass that to make the playoffs. Do you think they'll surpass it this year? There's never any love there, is there, for the Capitals? Well, they finished last season with 91 points, and I see them uh, finishing with around 90 to 94 points. Uh, but if you kind of take a look at it historically, 22-23 season, 80 points, and the high watermark is when they won the Stanley Cup. It only took 104 points. Uh, so I guess it kind of remains to be seen. But I see the Capitals finishing with around 90 to 94 points. I think the Capitals are going to take a lot of people by surprise. And I think that uh, a lot of these additions will be the biggest reason why that is. All right. Now, my New York Islanders at 91.5. They exceeded that a year ago. I think the Islanders are a little bit better this year than they were last year. So I think they will hit the over on that number. But uh, we shall see. We've got a lot more. To get to, we're going to discuss some of the big off-season additions for each of these four teams and what, how that is going to either improve or, or affect otherwise their future for the 2024-2025 NHL season. We've got that and a whole lot more coming up on this special Metro Contenders edition of the Locked On NHL podcast.
Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. And uh, everybody knows FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And uh, look, you've seen the over-under odds for each of the four teams being discussed on today's show. And that is not the only odds that you're going to find at FanDuel.com. We have got a lot to discuss on hockey futures. You can bet on who's going to win individual trophies, who's going to win the Stanley Cup, or any team that you want to see there over under, you can bet. So your favorite team, a team you've got a hunch on, it's all out there for you. Just head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We have had a busy off season. It's finally over. We're ready for hockey again. Dan, I want to start with you. You were itching to go talking about some of those additions that the Capitals made. Talk to me about the biggest addition for the Washington Capitals during this past off season. So listen, there's a couple of them, but the question was the biggest one. And I'm going to say it is Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now listen, when that move was made, there's a lot of people like, what is going on with that Capitals team? What are they doing taking on Pierre-Luc Dubois? Now listen, uh, I want to view last season as a blip on the radar. This is a guy uh, that has had back-to-back uh, 60 point seasons. I do think that uh, it is possible in the 21, 22, 22, 3 season. Um, and then his high water mark of 28 goals in the 21, 22 season. And uh, a lot of people will ask the question what about last season? What was up with PLD in the City of Angels? And I would say the biggest thing is I would say he was misutilized. I would say he was underutilized. And one of the things that was said is that he is not a guy that sees gray very well. He's a very black and white guy, and he didn't really mesh necessarily uh, with the coaching staff there. Now, the Capitals have are in a good position as they have an excellent head coach in Spencer Carberry, the carburetor, uh, that has a good rapport and actually likes to take on a reclamation project. I think that Spencer Carberry, for one, is going to have his work cut out for him, but I think that Alex Ovechkin spoke about he lacked chemistry with the centers last season for so many years. It was Nick Backstrom. I think that PLD is going to be the guy uh, to get Alex Ovechkin going and to uh, get uh, this team going in the right direction. Any other players who are additions that you think will be a big help? Of course. Uh, if you have to squeeze me for one more, I would say that Jacob Chikrin, uh, that was a huge, huge win. And at, at this point right now, I still, uh, I'm not entirely sure how that happened as it required uh, a Nick Jensen and a draft pick to acquire a Jacob Chikrin. A guy with an offensive flair uh, scored 41 points in 82 games for the Sens last season. Now, interesting, uh, when you take a look at PLD and you take a look at Jacob Chikrin, some people point to how they are off the ice. Some people say a little bit of a head case, and the Capitals have had that before with Evgeny Kuznetsov. But I do think that Jacob Chikrin, uh, a guy that was a forward younger in his playing career, um, is going to be uh, a really dynamic guy on the blue line. As we know, John Carlson routinely plays 25 to 30 minutes a night. He can help do that along with the big addition of Matt Roy. Uh, the Capitals were all in on him as well. So risky moves like uh, uh, former GM Brian McClellan said, but I think it's going to pay off and take the Caps to the next level. All right, we shall see. Going to be interesting to keep an eye on that. How about you, Zach? The biggest addition for the Carolina Hurricanes this offseason? I would say it's probably Sean Walker, the most probably the underrated signing for the Hurricanes. I think for the fact that you look at he's your – Brett Pesha replacement in terms of that he does have a lot of great defensive side to his game, but he does provide some offense and he especially had that this past season. You know, he did split between the Flyers and the Colorado Avalanche, but it was his probably his best season overall. 10 goals, career high, 19 assists, and he had 29 points in 81 games. So he's played really well and he played pretty good some seasons with the LA Kings. So someone who could you know, easily slide into the, into the second line D pair, you know, provide that penalty kill sp- specialist and someone who can transition the puck easily. And I think it's someone when you get him for $3.6 million, I think that's a steal for any team really that you can get a guy like Sean Walker on your roster. And who would be next on your list as far as the Canes are concerned? 
I would definitely say it's uh, getting Shane Gossespair back. I mean, you had him a couple seasons ago. You got him in a trade with the now Utah Hockey Club former Arizona Coyotes, and you got him for a six-round pick. And last year with the Detroit Red Wings, you know, 10 goals, 46 points, 46 assists, and 56 points, which, I mean, if you look at when you're having him as your Bray Shea replacement, he had more points than Bray Shea, and he's someone who's already been through the system before, so you bring him back for a second stint. Three years, three point two million dollars, easily can slide into your PP one group, be your you know quarterback of that power play unit, and you know he works already well with guys like you know Jalen Shaffield and uh, and probably some other guys too on the roster. So I mean he's another guy who can bring some transition, bring some offense. I know his defense isn't really the best in terms of what people love to see from him, but in terms of a how the unit works, especially when you have Tim Gleason who is your defense coach, and, of course, you have Rod Brennamore, who is your head coach of the team. I think that he's someone that could really you know, get three full seasons under his belt and be able to bring that offensive spark that the Hurricanes need, especially on the blue line, which in the last few years have had a blue line that's been top five or either has led all of defense and scoring. So, yeah, having that offensive side of him, along with Sean Walker being as your Shane and Pesci replacements, can't go wrong with that for the money they brought him in for. All right. John, how about you? The Rangers, busy offseason. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think without any doubt, I'm not even really sure it can be debated. The biggest pickup for the Rangers is going to be Riley Smith um, in a trade with the Penguins of all teams. But it's interesting because obviously Smith was with Vegas for, I want to say, like six or seven seasons, whatever it was, won the Stanley Cup there uh, as a proven playoff performer. But this is a guy that the Rangers have been kind of enamored with for, I would say, probably at least like three or four years now. You guys know how it is with Vegas. They've always got their, you know, salary cap gymnastics and, oh, man, who's going to be a cap casualty? Oh, maybe Smith will be. Maybe the Rangers can trade for him. That rumor has popped up, you know, several times over the years. And, of course, last year he's with the Penguins. Uh, they do the deal this offseason. I think it's a, you know, there's other players on one-year deals out there because he does have just one year left on his contract that I would probably prefer a little bit more than Riley Smith, maybe like a grittier player. You put him out there with Mika and Kreider, I think that could have worked well. But Smith does make this team better. There's no doubt about it. He's a well-rounded player. I mentioned the Stanley Cup a minute ago. He can help on uh, both special teams units and um, pretty good speed as well. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but it also kind of goes back to what I mentioned, you know, kind of at the top of the show where this Ranger team is just slightly better. I think Riley Smith is one of those guys uh, that makes this Ranger team slightly better. Not a superstar. I don't really get why the Rangers have been so in love with him for the last three or four years or whatever it's been. But um, he is a solid player, so I'm, I'm happy to have him here. And um, he's going to get, I think, probably the first chance uh, with Mika and Kreider because they've played with about a, a million different right wingers ever since uh, Pavel Buchnevich left. So looking forward to seeing what he can do. Well, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. I know you'll have it covered on Locked On Rangers. As far as the Islanders are concerned, I mean, there's only really two additions that the Islanders made all offseason. Not a lot of cap room. It's got to be Anthony Duclair, in my mind, who was the biggest acquisition. And what he adds is, number one, he's a legitimate top six forward. The Islanders only had four of them last year. So adding one is definitely a step in the right direction. And he gives this older, slower Islanders team another player who has a little bit of speed and who can put the puck in the net. Now, I'm thinking they're probably going to try him with Bo Horvat and Matthew Barzal on the top line, even though I think Duclair is ideally a second-line winger. But he is going to bring some of the things that the Islanders have been lacking in recent seasons with the speed and the scoring ability. And that's a big deal. If there was a second player, it, it's a sort of obscure one. But the Islanders signed Russian uh, forward Maxim Tsiplakov, who scored 31 goals in the KHL last year. He That was fourth overall in the entire league. He's sort of a wild card. If he has a smooth transition to the NHL, if he can give them 20 or more goals, that may be that sixth top six forward that this team needs. If he sort of takes a little longer to adjust to the NHL, well, and then, you know, you sort of not moving very much. It's a one-year deal. He's sort of the wild card for the Islanders, but I think Anthony Duclair will definitely be the biggest addition for the New York Islanders going forward. We have got more to get to on today's show. We're going to talk about what could derail each of our teams 
plus which one of these four teams is the most likely to fall out of the playoffs this year. We've got all that and more coming up on this special edition of Locked On NHL. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks. It makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. My favorite thing on the Game Time app is the view from your seat. You go on the app, and before you purchase the tickets, you'll get a panoramic view from your seat so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive and you also get game time's lowest price guarantee if you find a ticket in the same section and row game time will credit you with 110 percent of the difference so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply so again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. All right, gentlemen, uh, what is it that you feel would be the most likely thing to derail one of your teams? Uh, Zach, what would most likely derail the Carolina Hurricanes? I would say probably the thing that could really hurt the Hurricanes is the fact that you have your big boys kind of just slow down. Like Andre Sveshikov dealt with a lot of injuries last year. You're kind of hoping he has a 35-goal season. If he doesn't really get moving and then you're kind of, you know, if Martin Nietzsche doesn't take that step that you hope he does either, then you're kind of having to rely on Ajo and Jarvis to mainly main like lead the way. You really can't rely on two guys in your four core. Then you get then you got to hope your defense kind of picks them up. So honestly, it would be the lack of scoring that could probably hurt the Hurricanes the most. And injuries could be a catalyst to that as well too, because Frederick Anderson doesn't always stay healthy. So that could be another thing that could hurt him too. Where it's just you got to hope the guys stay healthy and you got to hope that the scoring's there. Because if not, it's kind of hard to make a playoff run when you got two, three guys leading the way and everyone else is kind of just meandering around dan how about you with the capitals what would be the most likely thing to derail washington's season by a by a long shot it's alex ovechkin and what kind of season he's going to have he got off to his slowest start last uh, season in the goal scoring department uh turned on the jets after the all-star break and finished with 31 goals but that's the big question as he's getting closer and closer to his 39th birthday which is on the 17th what kind of season is he going to have and then the biggest question is is what kind of chemistry is he going to have with the center that he plays with? Whether it be Dylan Strom, whether it be Pierre-Luc Dubois, that is the biggest thing. As I've always said on my show, as Alex Ovechkin goes, so go the Capitals. If Ovi doesn't find his stride and lacks chemistry with PLD, that could cause the wheel to wobble with the Caps. He's the offensive spark plug for the team, and the Caps need him firing on all cylinders. Uh, they've added some big pl- uh, pieces to this team. Uh, Listen, he's chasing Gretzky at the end of the day, Uh, 41 to catch him, 42 to pass. Is this next season going to be the season for Alex Ovechkin to catch the great one? I don't think so, but he's going to get close. But that is the biggest person to follow on this team, of course, is the great eight. Do you think that Gretzky's record will motivate him in a certain way to have a better season this year? Listen, I think it drives him nuts at the end of the day because he's always questioned in these post-game pressers, when are you going to catch him? When are you going to catch him? And then he kind of changed his stance. He said, listen, I don't really care about catching Gretzky. Yeah, right. He said, I just want to win more cups with the Capitals. Now, listen, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid for the Capitals. Are they going to win another cup within the next two seasons that Ovechkin's under contract? Maybe. Uh, I don't know if that is a Hail Mary pass that's going to find a wide receiver, but I'd really like to think so. Um, But the biggest thing out there is I think that Ovechkin, of course, wants Mm -hmm. to catch Gretzky and see if he can do it under this current contract. My projection for him this upcoming season is 35 goals, which will be a little bit short, but I think that he'll be uh, better than he was last season. John, how about you? What derails the Rangers or what's most likely to derail the Rangers? 
Yeah, for me, there's two things. I'll do a quick honorable mention here, and then I'll kind of dive into greater detail on the second one. It's an over-reliance on two different things. The the first one being Igor Shesterkin. We've seen this basically on and off with different Ranger teams for about two decades now, because obviously you got Igor now, you had Henrik Lundqvist as the franchise goalie uh, before that, and there's times where, you know, they, they just kind of, I don't want to say forget to play defense, because I think they're kind of beyond that at this point, but they do rely on Igor to save their bacon every now and then. I mean, that that's pretty obvious. Um, but that one's pretty self-explanatory. The, the one that I want to focus a little bit more on is special teams, kind of an over-reliance on special teams. Now, on one hand, number three power play last year, number three penalty kill last year, that's awesome. That's not a bad thing. I'm not going to apologize for that. I don't think any Ranger fan should. But at that same time, you look at what they did 5v5, they were sort of just a middle-of-the-road kind of a team there. And I think if that happens again, you know, regular season, partly, but more so in the playoffs, it, it's kind of hard to just kind of power play and special teams your way to the Stanley Cup. Now, it's important. Don't get me wrong. Um, you can't have like a bad penalty kill and expect to win the Stanley Cup. But by that same token, you, you got to bring it 5v5. And I think when you look at that series against the Panthers, uh, the Panthers usually had the edge when the teams are playing uh, at even strength. All, all those games were close and all the scores were close. But, um, you know, 5v5, it was noticeable how often – you know, the Panthers had the puck or they were on the attack, more shot attempts, whatever you know, stat you want to go by, the eye test. Um, but yeah, I, I think just an over-reliance on special teams, that that could hurt the Rangers uh, this upcoming season if, if things were to go south. As for the Islanders, a uh, couple of things. Uh, like what you said, John, I'm going to do two. One is an honorable mention that'll be a little briefer. The honorable mention is going to be special teams. You talked about the penalty kill. The Islanders had the worst penalty kill in the NHL last year and still somehow made the playoffs. The power play was around, what, 18th, 19th. They've got to be better in those two areas. It's very hard to make the playoffs when you are dead last in the league <laughs> on the PK. But to me, the bigger one is the health of the goaltending and the defense core. Right now with Ilya Sorokin, you know, there are rumors about what his situation may or may not be heading into the start of the season. The Islanders are going to need Sorokin and Semyon Varlamov to be strong. And, and last year, you know, you had a situation where Scott Mayfield missed 41 games and played hurt for 40 of the 41 he did appear in. He was playing on a broken ankle. You had Adam Pellick and Ryan Polak missing about 25 games each due to injury. There's not a great deal of depth on the blue line for this team. So keeping the defense healthy and the goaltenders healthy and ready, that to me is the biggest thing for the New York Islanders heading into this season. And if it doesn't happen, that's where they could be derailed. So which one of the four teams that are here on this show do you think is most likely to fall back and miss the playoffs? Dan, let's start with you. All right. So, Zach, you're going to want to cover your ears. The team that lost players, uh, T.O. Taravainen, uh, Nation, Brady Shea, Brett Pesci, well, you know, so they made some big signings and re-signed some players to address this issue. Uh, the effectiveness of these players remains uncertain. Uh, and then you take a look at the departed players that joined the rival New Jersey Devils. That's a tough pill to swallow. So I would say a potential regression in performance due to departures is a real concern that could impact the team's next season. John, how about you? Uh, which team do you think might fall out of the top four here? Yeah, it's not really for any major reason other than just very simple process of elimination. For me, I'm sorry, Dan, but I'm probably going to go with the Capitals for this one here. You know, you look at them, and they, they have gotten a little bit younger, and Dan touched on that a little bit uh, earlier in today's show. Uh, but they are still kind of a veteran team. I was looking at projected ages, and I, I think they have like the eighth oldest roster projected going into the season. Um, Pierre-Luc Dubois, you know, the, the talent is there, and maybe playing with Alex Ovechkin kind of causes him to get his head on straight a little bit. But, you know, he's one of those players, we, we see players like this in every sport where it feels like it's always something. There's always something going on. There's always a, at least a little bit of drama. Um, and again, I, I just feel like there's a better chance that it would happen at the Capitals than one of the other teams. It, it really doesn't go uh, much farther beyond that. Zach, how about you? Sorry, Dan, feelings mutual, I guess. Uh, it's going to be one of those things where, yeah, you it is a you know reclamation project, hopefully, but that's still a high risk bringing in guys like Chicker and NPLD who, you know, 
we see that yeah they have the they have the talent but will it translate and that's the thing where it's like if they're not going and like you said that could lead to distractions and can lead to Obi not having a great start to his season and you know you you've got Logan Thompson and Charlie Lindgren how are those how are they going to do as a tandem so I think it's just a lot of question marks where it's not a low risk high reward this could be a high risk possibly low reward for the Capitals and yeah, it's just like what John said, it's just process of elimination of where you're looking at for these four teams right now on the show. It's going to be the Capitals just with a lot of question marks on a lot of what could or what could not happen for them this year. I also, Dan, I'm sorry, I have to go with the Capitals <laughs> as well. I mean, here's a team that had what was a goal differential of minus 37 last year, which it's tough to make the playoffs with that kind of a goal differential. They did it. I give them credit for that. And the other thing is, you know, you, you talked about as Alex Ovechkin goes, so go the Capitals. If it doesn't work out with Pierre-Luc Dubois, that could set Ovi back. And his age could set Ovi back. Father time catches up with everybody eventually. And the slow start last year leads me to believe that maybe that process is starting to happen to Alexander Ovechkin. We'll see. I, I, I'm not saying the Capitals are a lock not to make it by any means. And I think my Islanders would probably be a close second if I was being honest about this, but I think the Capitals, they, they were lowest in the, in the standings out of the four teams here. They have the lowest projection by FanDuel. And I think they're the most likely to regress. Gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for joining us and thanks for making this episode of the 2024 locked on NHL season preview. Your first listen today for your second listen, catch the rest of the Metropolitan Division and every episode of the 2024 Locked On NHL season preview on Locked On NHL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.